Hi folks, welcome to Build Fly Go. So, quick video on um, doing creating a magnetometer harness for the V5. Um, the Garmin G3X system, a number of the other Garmin systems, and also the G5 use a magnetometer. Uh, this is the GMU11 GMU magnetometer, which is senses uh, magnetic fields and gives you a magnetic head heading just like a compass, right? So it gives compass information to the G5 or the G3X. Uh, for the G3X system, Garmin makes um, two magnetometer options, the GMU-11, which is this one, which works on the CAN bus, and a GMU-22, which uh, goes over a serial port to the G3X system. In the RV-10, we have actually chosen to use the GMU-22, not this one, uh, because of uh, length limitations on the CAN bus harness. The RV-10 is somewhat large, and uh, it limits us a little bit on where how we can run the CAN bus and things like that. So using the one that isn't on the CAN bus just helps save a little bit of length. But Garmin was very nice and lent us a GMU-11 so that we could do this video and also for us to be able to do a magnetometer test. The magnetometer test is a way for you to um, use a magnetometer and a G5 or, well, you can use it with a G3X, but with a G5, and check if a location is good for the magnetometer. Um, some locations are going to have a lot of magnetic interference, a lot of ferrous stuff that is going to make it so the magnetometer isn't, uh, doesn't work as well. Um, so it's a good idea to, before you find a, find a final location for your, uh, for your GMU-11 or GMU-22 for you to run a magnetometer test. So this is a very simple harness that we're gonna make. Um, but I also wanted to talk a little bit about tools. Uh, I've had a couple of questions on which tools I use. Um, I do recommend that you watch the tools video that Garmin has on YouTube. Uh, there is, uh, they have a whole series of videos on uh, one of the episodes is on tools and which ones you might want, uh, and another one is on making different terminations, uh, doing shield drains and things like that. They're very, very good, um, and uh, so I'm not going to repeat those, right? I'm not going to like do a very detailed, this is how you do a termination shield drain, because I feel that the ones that they've made are excellent. So there's going to be a link in the bottom. Uh, please, if you're considering um, doing something like this, please go watch the Garmin videos. They're very, very good. Um, but the tools that I use... Um, a wire stripper, right? Very common. Uh, this wire stripper is similar to the one with the blue handles that you've seen, but it has, um, I don't know if I should call them mil spec blades, but the blades on them have uh, captive, um, they're captive and they're machined so that they are the, the exact right size for aviation wire. Aviation wire insulation isn't exactly the same as insulation in, in for other wire. It's, I believe it's a little thinner if I remember right, or thicker, I don't know, one or the two. Um, so the, the blades here are the right size for that. And also it has flat uh, grabbing jaws. See how those are flat. Let me grab the other one. I'll come around here. I also have a set of the blue handled ones um, that also work very well, but I find that I, f I found a good deal on that, that one, so I decided to buy one. But you can see how these blades are not captive um, and the sizes are not exactly the same as the ones over there. Also, the, the jaws are not flat, so they can, if you're not careful, um, sort of damage the wire a little bit. So I have a set of the nice mil spec ones that I use for aviation work. Um, also, nice set of offset crimpers. Um, I'm, I'm very particular about my, not crimpers, cutters. I'm very particular about my cutters, so I like having a really nice set of cutters, so I do recommend, you know, checking out different ones that you can get going with that. Um, a crimp tool. Um, this is a very common tool. Uh, it's got positioners, right? So for the different size pins, there's different positioners. And on the back of the positioner, there's the, the setting information that will set the set up the tool, right? So for which, what to select it to. You just pop the pin in there, pop the wire in and crimp it. You'll notice that I do have a number of different size positioners over here. Um, you know, there's the real name of the positioner on there, but I never remember what's what. So I just put a little piece of tape with, you know, this is standard D sub male or female, high density male, high density female or circular connector. There's not very many circular connectors. Um, 
there's I don't remember the last time I did a high density female. It's possible that I've never done one. Uh, high density male comes up a lot in GTNs and things like that and audio panels, but standard is by far the most common um, that you're gonna get. So if you do decide to go with this style of crimper, um, you want at least these two, I don't know if that's upside down, at least those two positioners. Um, I suggest uh, checking um, auction sites for this kind of stuff. Uh, you can find some pretty good deals. Brand new, this tool is quite expensive, um, but you can often find it for a small fraction of the price online. Um, you should, if you buy a used one, uh, check it Check it out. There's a go, no go gauge that you can either buy or uh, have made. Uh, some of the part supply stores that make things like that. Um, will happily make you a go no go gauge that fits in here so that you can make sure that uh, the used tool that you get is actually up to spec. Um, just a screwdriver. Again, I'm sort of particular, I'm so weird about tools. I'm sort of particular about there are some good tools and then there's normal tools, right? So I will usually get a nice brand a screwdriver and you'll notice the tips um, on the nicer screwdrivers. Let me find one that you can look at. There we go. Have, the tips have like a little, some of them have like a little diamond coating or sand coating or little laser engravings or something like that. And they grip the heads of the screws so much better. I never believed this. I always thought this was silly, but you should try, right? Like a cheap tool, cheap screwdriver next to a good screwdriver and you'll immediately tell the difference. <laughs> Um, anyway, so bucket of pins, oops, right? High density pins, regular standard pins. I've only got males of the high density pins and I've got a lot of them. Um, and then the low density standard and I'm sorry, the standard density, uh, females and males. And these are just pin removal tools. Um, nothing, nothing fancy. Um, I have yet to find uh, a high quality pin removal tool. They all seem to be these sort of plasticky ones. They work fine. Uh, it does feel a little bit like a tool that could have a better version. Not that you really use it that much. Um, and then, um, solder sleeves. Solder sleeves are just a little piece of heat shrink tubing with sealant on both ends, right? The two blue lines on the outsides are like a little sealant that melts and seals the wire. In the middle, is a dab of solder. And let me show you what it looks like when you shrink it. This is what it looks like. So it shrinks with a heat gun and then the sealed, the ends seal themselves, right? You see the blue that leaked out a little bit there. And then the middle will melt the solder so that uh, you can, you know, solder a shield drain onto a wire. So here is, I just stripped the uh, the insulator off, and then I have the exposed um, shield in the wire, and so you just slide this on, and then you heat it with a heat gun to the at the proper temperature, the proper specs. The middle will melt, um, and it will stop being red, right? The red is the indicator that it's not done yet, and it will just look silver. Um, you can also do this by soldering. Uh, again, the Garmin video on this goes step by step on how to do a shield drain and the different ways you can do it. Um, I am not going to go into that kind of detail because they have excellent videos. Let them, you know, <laughs> follow follow their instructions. Um, what else? I have a uh, label maker. Um, nothing fancy. This is a um, not a high end label maker at all. I use generic label tape. And uh, the it's it's heat shrink tubing tape, right? So if you look over here, right, like at these wires, I have the tubing on here. They haven't been shrunk yet because we're still gonna size the wire so the tape is gonna move a little bit. And then we're gonna shrink it with a heat gun and then it's just gonna shrink down and stick to the, to the, to the wire. You'll notice that there are two different sizes there. Um, the quarter inch, is the one that we have used the most. We're, I want to say we've used eight, nine, or ten uh, little cassettes of these quarter inch. There's five feet in each, so it's not very much. Um, so uh, we we buy these in the in the four packs, I think, or in three packs or something like that. And I've gone through 
three or four, three packs. So maybe it's a lot more than I think. Uh, they also make them in three eighths inch and half inch. Um, you're going to use very, very little of the three eighths and a half. Uh, I, they're reasonably inexpensive in like the three packs for the generic stuff. So I just got a three pack of the three eighths, a three pack of the half, and then we've gone through so much of the quarter inch that I don't even know. Uh, you're also going to need silicone tape. Um, you can find this anywhere. It's just silicone tape. No big deal. Um, you use it to sort of create a sort of a little protected area for the wire. Check the Garmin videos. They cover that in detail. Um, and we also have a little tackle box full of the, the proper length screws to screw the shield drains onto the back of the, the connector. Um, these do not come with the connector kits. Uh, I sort of wish they did, but they don't come with the connector kits, but you can buy them anywhere, right? Like you just, uh, I, I buy, you know, aviation, <laughs> aviation screws and washers and such at the usual supply stores. Uh, but, uh, you can get that stuff anywhere. Um, and also over here is a, just a regular crimper for, uh, for quick, quick terminals. Um, this is not the super expensive, it's not the equivalent to one of these, um, but it is a decent quality crimper. And then I just have a tackle box full of assorted, um, terminals of different sizes. The red, blue, and yellow indicate the different size of a wire that can go into them. And I never remember what it is, so I just wrote it on the outside of the tackle box. I probably need to write that out again. Um, and then... The the other differences that you see here are like for these for these ring whoops for these ring ones I just have a bunch of different sizes of ring ones. Um, there's also some butt splices in here. I don't use these very often. Um, it's usually I will use the butt splice when I have to join a bunch of wires. Right, like some devices have two or three or four ground pins and they actually want you to connect all all of that to one breaker. So I'll use a, a butt splice for that. But other than that. I personally, I find it to be poor form <laughs> to use a butt splice. Um, if you have to butt splice stuff, uh, similar to how Garmin shows in their videos, you're going to use uh, these tiny, tiny, tiny little butt splices over here. Um, and uh, I have discovered that those are horrendously expensive. They're almost a buck a piece, which I just don't understand. <laughs> Hey folks, so that covers tools that we're going to use uh, as we put together this magnetometer harness. Um, I've covered pretty much all of the tools that uh, I usually use during a, well, I guess during avionics builds. A um, couple of quick changes um, is since that video was recorded, um, I have replaced my Pidge uh, crimp tool. I had a generic one uh, before, and I've replaced it with the TE version, the actual branded um, TE, you know, crimp tool. Um, partially because uh, the, the generic one is fine. Um, it works great, and I've done a lot of crimps with it, and it's fine. Um, but I wanted the, you know, sort of the confidence of knowing that the, you know, sort of the certified tool was, was being used. It wasn't horrendously expensive. It's a tool that I've been wanting to buy for a while. So I'm, you know, I was happy to, happy to do that. Um, really nothing, no other changes since then. Uh, I mentioned the crimping of the, um, butt splices. Uh, there is of course a special tool for, there's a special tool for everything, right? There's a special uh, tool for that. Um, similar to all the others, it's got a ratcheting mechanism and you just sort of fit it in the front and crimp it, uh, crimp it down. Um, I picked this one up, uh, pre-owned, um, on one of the usual auction websites. And, uh, as with all of the pre-owned tools that I purchase, I also have the test go, no go gauge. Uh, I order that as well. Um, and, uh, you don't have to order that from the manufacturer. The specs for the tool include the, what the diameters are usually for the go, no go gauge. So you can go to, uh, just a regular tool and die maker and have that, have that made for you. Um, pretty cheap. I think it's about 20 bucks for the, for the test for this. Um, personally, I find that that's really important, right? Like if you bought a used tool, you don't know how used it is, how worn it is. 
Um, so you, you, you know, got a deal on the tool. So the, you know, for me, the proper thing to do is also to get the, get the gauge and make sure the tool is good. But yeah, stay tuned for the next in this little mini series, uh, which is going to be the actual buildup of the harness. We'll see you soon. Thanks.